Twitch International Master Fide, International Master William Pascal, bringing you entertainment, but most importantly, real chess knowledge. Um, if I can do so, I'd like to be instructive. And um, this is not just for entertainment. I really know what I'm doing, believe it or not. So with that behind us, I'd just like to apologize for yesterday's technical issues. It seems that I had um, just lag issues with my machine for some reason. So being able to restart it would um, would solve the problem. But in the middle of the simul, we had a, we had an issue now. We had an issue because I can't stop the stream very easily during the simul. I can't restart my machine. So simul is the one the one thing where I have kind of a problem. Um, other other streams I might be able to to actually do a complete restart, but we were kind of hand handcuffed yesterday. So apologies for that slightly marred finish to the simul, though most mostly it went all right. Um, welcome everybody to the stream. Good to see you, Astrobate. <clears throat> We've got a challenge from Wikipoo. Who's too strong? I need a warm up game. Um, Wikipoo's too strong and fast. Guys, we're taking challenges 5, 3 through 7 plus 3. We keep who here at the bottom end of the spectrum at 5 plus 3. I will take challenges from subscribers first and everyone else is welcome to try as long as you have 100 rated games here on the stream. Let me get a warm up game to get my brain functioning and um, see if we can get warmed up to face Wikipoo. Wikipoodia. W Angel A, five plus five, the, the increment a little on the long side, but we can do it. Here's another one, five plus five, they're rated though. I need a casual, I need a casual challenge with a fast time control that's unrated. How's this guy, 1400? This will really push me to my limits. I really want to play someone a little stronger than 1400, but let's just see if we remember how to move the pieces. Just so, you know, Wikipoo's mouse skills don't overwhelm me um very bad lag yesterday and i thought it was maybe my internet but everyone else in the house had uh had good connections so i'm beginning to think i'm gonna have to just like restart my my machine before streams or something it hasn't been an issue but sometimes you never know a little bit sudden lag there <clears throat> okay so e6 what is this what is this guy doing with e6 we don't need e6 to play d5 this is a bad move. I'm weakening his dark squares, among other things. You could have played d5 right away. Simply don't need this move. An unnecessary move, weakening the dark squares and blocking your bishop on c8. Very well, sir. He's certainly fast, though. This seems to be a problem. People put too much emphasis on playing quickly. Even knight a6, not a bad move. For 1436, he has 1700 in rapid based on two games. Which is respectable. Radagast, honestly, um, your game was relatively well played compared to most. I mean, I had something like plus seven against Efidov and lost. You know, I mean, I had a couple of games against those Slav guys, I was just completely winning. I mean, don't feel bad. You had you had a slight edge, and you you threw it away. I mean, obviously your opening can be played better, but um, the biggest mistake was taking on b six. But as far as like you know, spoiling good positions, I'm the master of that. In these simuls, when I start getting low on time, um, really bad. So this this is kind of annoying trying to play c five. There's a team battle tomorrow. Thank you for reminding me, Hanish Burger. No, no, tomorrow. So that's perfect that you reminded us now, actually. I should make this announcement. Tuesday, that's tomorrow at 2 p.m. Central European Summertime. We're going to be taking part in a, in a multi-team battle. This guy seems really good for 1400. At least at, like, moving around quickly. Yeah, tomorrow. So join us, please. We need as many players as we can get. It's an arena, 3-0, kind of fast time control, but it's casual. So it won't affect your rating. No harm in, in participating. 
You have to join the Pawn and Horses Club to play. So hopefully Wikipoo's around. Could use him. Wikipoo, if you're out there, join Pawn and Horses Club if you're not already. We need your skills. Tomorrow, a little later in the afternoon, maybe, I hope Wikipoo can play because he's extremely fast and quick. Could use him on the team. All right. We're facing off in a stream, multi-streamer battle with Tranquilizer and uh, Meritsitsa. I mean, this guy's 1400, give me a break. 1400. He hasn't played great, but he's not 1400. He may yet drop a piece, but, but he's not done so yet. And I'm not that optimistic he will. This is a tough one. I don't really want to, um, man, I don't want to give up control of D4 either. This is awkward. Knight H5, Jenny Jenny. I don't know, man. He's definitely too good to be 1400. I just dropped a pawn, now I'm good. He's got his friend who's like 1600 playing on his behalf. I mean, seriously. This is not, not a bad game, considering the kind of bad opening he played. Not that bad at all. Pestering me constantly with annoying threats. Without making blunders. Another threat without any sort of errors of any kind. No major errors, no tactical mistakes. 1436. Of course, it's kind of a closed position. I think this guy would just destroy the average 1436 just by nature of not making obvious mistakes. That's all you have to do. Secret to chess, not make mistakes. And he's also quick enough. I mean, man, if this guy's 1400, I'll eat my hat. He could easily be 1800. He's played passively. You know, I think he's not played great, but if you're 1400, you make no tactical mistakes. That's pretty good. He's made a concession now. Still hanging tough. Look at this, bishop e8. Yeah, right. Maneuvers like that when you're 1400. Queen h5, this is a piece. Makes you want to play chess online, doesn't it? Super suspicious. Of course he's suspicious. I wouldn't say he played like an engine, but he's not 1400. That's the first player I get paired with. Defending with moves like bishop e8. <laughs> it's crazy. The last time I reported something like this, Lee Chess just ignored me. It was worse, though. It was a guy who was... Um, I fell for a kind of straightforward combination here. I played a guy the other day who was 1100, and he basically played the game like he was 2000, and I wrote like a long email 
to Lee Chess to explain that um, this is a 2,000 player playing on, on a 1,100 account, which isn't really fair to people, you know, who are going to face him in rated games. And I listed my games and they still didn't, they still didn't label him. Um, I don't know what to do, you know. That's not right. We have someone running around who's like a thousand rating points higher than than the rating they're playing. Like they have their friend playing on their account or something. All right, Wiki Poo, I guess we're ready to play. That was a tough fourteen hundred. Took a lot of work though, and I was down to two minutes. Guys, check out the um, the stream tomorrow. Our next stream will be tomorrow afternoon at two, CEST. I don't know. It might have not been seen or ignored. No clue. How can they, how can they, you know, possibly um, deal with all the, I imagine all the, the submissions of accusations here. It's a mind boggling, mind boggling um, concept. The one thing that concerns me the most about Lee Chess, they don't have enough you know, admins and, and stuff to keep the thing running properly. It's a great concept. I love Lee Chess, but a lot of things have been sort of hanging lately. The simul page yesterday, I couldn't even get 25 players because we couldn't, uh, the list wouldn't, wouldn't show up in the list, in the, in the simul page. Um, my simul wouldn't show up. That's two weeks in a row. I haven't seen tournaments. Where's Wikipoo? All right, I haven't seen tournaments. Like if you create your own tournament, they're not on the list anymore. Let me let me go to this and get these guys in. Into the team, Hanish Burger, BB Will. All right, guys, you're welcome to join. Tomorrow we have the six streamer battle at two o'clock. Wikipedia doesn't seem to be here. Maybe he went went away. He'll be back later. We'll play uh, whoever subscribes. Is anybody a subscriber? Rad? Sit on? Streamers complaining that the streams and be listed on the site. Well, I mean, that I kind of understand because up in the left hand corner, um, there's only space for a few at a time and they've been putting all those tournaments up there. I don't like the way they have that. You know, there should be kind of a different system. <laughs> Honestly, maybe maybe ultimately the streamer list should be a separate page you have to click on to go there. I mean, I know they have that, but um, maybe something a little more noticeable, like one link up in the left-hand corner, and then you click that and you get a list of all the current streamers or something like that. You know, that can be improved easily. But I can see how, you know, I've complained about it a little bit too. But if there's like 10 people streaming, they can't all fit up there in the corner. All right, but the other simple stuff, like what's the point of having simuls on a site where the simuls aren't listed so no one's knowing they exist? Um, you know, that's just somebody dropping the ball. There's a bug in the simul page. Baby chess, it's all right. You can come back. Come back and, and join us. I know you were waiting for a while for the challenge, so I can't complain if you had to go go away. Go away yourself. I didn't take your challenge right away. Played my warm-up game with the 1400. So rather brown with, with exchanging on d4 and bishop e7. Bishop e4 famously the main move. Another possible solution for black in this line is Bud Phoenix choice of e4, which I always thought was a little bit underrated. Um, that's certainly okay for black. More of a closed game. All right, so we've got challenges from subscribers. Sit on. Autophagist might be a subscriber too, right? I can't keep track of all you guys who are subscribers. It's hard. Autofad just played in the simul yesterday. 
That was another game I ruined that I was winning. I had a lot of good positions that I ruined yesterday. That was the Joko Piano. The Slavs were the worst against Notch Papa. The no, Notch Papa was a Queen's Gambit. I thought that was Mr. Coffee. And, um, and Efidov. But let, let me, what third I should finish something if that is possible? Well, you can play. You mean like you want to wait to be the third one to play? You want, want me to delay accepting your game? Okay. That's fine. Wikipoo got reconnected. So we'll take the challenge with Sidon and then Wikipoo. Because Sidon is a subscriber. This is an interesting approach by Black. I don't really like exchanging pieces when I have a space advantage such as this. But Black's violating some pretty fundamental principles here. Wasting time, not establishing a pawn center. His play is slightly dubious to set up. We'll call it hyper modern. I didn't really want to trade uh, my white square bishop. I could play e4. But the problem is that would involve sacrificing a pawn. Although maybe I just didn't analyze this far enough tactically. I had e4, knight takes c4, e5. And if bishop takes g2, I might have had an in-between move here with pawn takes f6. He takes my rook, I take his bishop attacking his queen. And it looks like I win material. Oof. That variation should have been checked a little deeper. That's my bad. Forcing tactical variations, we, we have time to work out, especially in this time control. Although I've been playing faster and faster because of the 3 2 blitz I'm playing on Thursday nights, I've been sort of speeding up my play. Um, that's not really optimal here in a 7 plus 3 time control. Asturbate, it's a separate stream tomorrow, it's an extra stream. So we're not moving my current stream. We're just doing an extra one. I'll be streaming at 2 p.m. CEST till 3.30, and then I'll be back in the evening at the 6.30 stream. You guys get two streams in one day, which has practically never happened before. All right. Did he miss this or purposely sacrifice this pawn? I think he just missed it. Pawn d5. Because, you know, his bishop is actually quite bad. Pawn d5. He was pawn d5. Defied by the Ponda. The knight on c6 is. It's the mother of all knights. The temptation was to just play knight takes e7 check, but then when you stop and you think about it, this knight is just way, way more powerful than that bishop. My YouTube videos are very good. I need to make more YouTube videos. I'm a little short of time. But hopefully in the future, because my YouTube videos that I have made are, are successful, um, I could probably become a YouTube chess video streamer, but um, I don't have any extra time to work on it because I'm teaching most of the time. So I would like to. Nah, this wasn't Brad's best game. He got tangled up. But bishop e7 is not a great move here. I've played some funny games where I played like knight f5. It's, it's sort of a stupid move. 
Again, the bishop on e7 is not stronger than the knight on d4. So you're going to see there's not a lot of games here. Only one where this has actually been played over the board. It's amazing. Over 600 games in, in real life, so to speak. But bishop e4 is the only reliable move there. If you like closed positions, as I said, you, you can go for this. e4 is interesting. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna take the challenge from, from Sidon. Then, well, anyway, we've got Wikipedia, Hanisberger, Autophagist. I'm taking subscriber challenges first. Wikipedia is not a subscriber. The only reason I'm not taking his challenge first. He's a good player though. Wikipedia, join our team. The Pond and Horses Club. You're probably already a member, but maybe not with this account. You made a new account. There's been like a record number of ambulances this morning. This is like the 10th one since I woke up. It started to just irritate me. All right, we trap his bishop. But I really don't like the European ambulance sound. The one, the kind they have in America, the sirens are less annoying somehow. This old French police car sirens are just really getting on my nerves. It's very romantic. <laughs> I feel like I'm in an old movie or something, but it's... All right, G5. So you never have to take such bishops directly. Usually the best policy is to kind of wait and take on your terms. Maybe you'll make a mistake, like play h3 or something crazy. Even for that matter. I'm just making sure there's no tactical tricks here. h4 please play h4 listen when i take this bishop in these london system positions they they think they have play along the h file actually it's fairly valid here particularly with g5 um, i have to be a little bit careful with g6 as well uh, i would try to fianchetto my bishop <clears throat> normally all right bishop e2 I mean, I'm not committed to castling on the king side either. Now is he threatening knight takes g5 or something to that effect? Not really. Still not really threatening it. My queenside bishop here is the problem. I normally like to do a double fianchetto type of setup. You can go ahead and play b6 probably. There are other possibilities, maybe c5. White, I, I kind of call it like playing the Karo Khan with white, what, what white's doing here. Karo Khan and the, the London system, when played, you know, with c3, e3, d4, this sort of passive formation. It's not very exciting, but I'll, I'll give it credit for being, again, like, quite solid for white. All right, let's wait and see what he's gonna do before I commit my queen side. It's possible I can play it like a Dutch. F5, knight F6, something like that. Okay, now C4 changes the position a bit, weakening him, weakening him potentially on the dark squares. C5 becomes interesting here. But I also have problems with knight c3, knight e4, knight b5. And my d6 pawn if I play c5. So I'm not sure I really want to do that. Raises interesting questions. Do we want to play a Dutch type formation or something like b6, bishop b7? 
I'm concerned about the white squares being really weak here for me. I can't afford to make more white square weaknesses. Troll, you're the only one chatting in here. Apparently. Monday morning streams are, are shaky. Sometimes we have very few people. Sometimes we get a lot. But generally people are not as chatty in the morning as they are in the evening. Okay, so knight c3, this is a square. Did someone say d5? d5 for me. I'm concerned about the future of my white square bishop when you start talking about stuff like d5. I'm tempted to play f5, but it's, again, radically, a radically weakening move. I think white is playing this. About as well as can be played. I mean, after bishop e2, I didn't expect him to play aggressively on the queen side with c4. White chose a sort of passive setup in general. All right, maybe we go for it. <clears throat> Chestnut, good morning. Thanks for being a subscriber. 5 a.m. there and you couldn't sleep. I've been there. Luckily last night I could sleep because I was lucky, usually after simuls, my mind is sort of worrying and I, I have trouble sort of turning it off. But last night it was only 19 players as opposed to the usual 25. I had a few quick draws. I don't think the simul was quite as stressful as it usually is. I was actually able to sort of wind down. I mean, when I play chess and I compete, um, I get kind of a lot of adrenaline flowing. And um, the simul sometimes make it difficult to rest after that. But I was good. Sorry to hear you couldn't sleep. You should keep trying though. There's uh, still time. Hopefully. All right. I think white has a good setup. Now what, maybe knight d2? Threatening bishop h5 check? I was planning on meeting that with knight f6. Another possibility White's trying to castle queen. So basically white turned the, it's unbelievable that I played the Smyslav Kings Indian. Sidan has turned the white side of the London system into the Smyslav Kings Indian. How do you do that exactly? Unbelievable. It's like a completely different opening. It's as if white started with d4, c4, knight c3, knight f3, bishop g5, and, and then turn the London system into that somehow. That's crazy. Very mature opening here. I don't really love this Dutch setup I've got. Not my usual thing. <laughs> We're gonna have to be careful, but the knight should guard the king side. Sharp position ensues. I also don't understand the people that are teaching others to play the London system with castle and queen side. I mean, there's lots of aggressive openings you could play. But I don't think the London system was, was designed to be a sharp opening where you're castling opposite sides. It's basically like a safe, simple system to recommend to beginners that just develops your pieces. Castling queen side here um, entails some risk because the bishop's on the long diagonal. My general rule is I don't like to castle queenside. Kings Indian Benoni's, where the bishop's on the long diagonal and its diagonal is open. It's a different situation when the pawn is on e5. If the pawn is on e5 and the black bishop is blocked on the long diagonal, I think it's, it's certainly okay to castle queenside. 
But what a lot of people don't realize, this is live, you know. I mean, it may not hurt you now, but it could really hurt you later. And White doesn't have a bishop like that, so... He has to seriously consider just castling king's side in this type of position. It's not like, you know, he's going to lose directly, but I think it's dangerous in general. Does Leisha show your performance when you give a simul? Um, no. No, that's that would be a cool feature. I would just set, I would settle for them listing the simuls in the in the simul page. <laughs> I would settle for my simuls actually showing up in the list. Rather than asking for any, asking the gods of Leeches for a new feature. So he didn't try anything aggressive with Castle's Queen side. I'm going to play for b5 eventually. Whether he plays Castle's Queen side or King side, either way. That's one of my only good breaks here. It also keeps his knight off of b5. Very solid positional play by White. He's not going to risk casting queenside. If I play e5, well, at this point, I mean, I'm running out of plans, and it feels like White's got c5. Maybe I should castle. The c5 break is a strong idea. Maybe I should consider c5 myself. It feels strange to play c5, though. Some weak points in my position, like b6. Position. Speaking of b6, maybe it's time for b6. This is very artificial. I like white here. I'm making too many pawn moves. No problem at all. Yeah, no, there's nothing like that. I don't think it shows performance like that. Plus, it's there, it's not rated, so. Lee Chess seems to make a very strong distinction between casual and rated things. One big disappointment for me is that the casual games aren't put into, like, the opening explorer. It's online chess, after all. I really don't think it matters if it's rated or not rated at the end of the day. It's not like it's, like, officially submitted to some rated rating organization. It's just an online rating. All the good games that I've played and have been played against me are not saved for the opening explorer, which seems stupid. Okay, so this move I long expected earlier um, when I prepared, I was thinking about b6, this, this one idea of, of taking over this diagonal. I mean, Sudan must must be, he must have some weakness tactically because positionally he's extremely strong for his rating. In order to be 1700, he would have to have some tactical weaknesses. Otherwise he would be higher rated. He's played this just like you would play one of those Kings Indians I was talking about. I think a very mature, sophisticated sort of positional game of course, no tactics thus far. Zen Chess, what's up? Oh, he watched your game on YouTube. That's cool. Watched our game. Yeah, he's a good guy. Glad to hear he's doing okay. I reached out to him as well. I haven't had a chance to check my messages on ICC. I never really get over there. So, but I sent him a joking message. Thanks for delivering the, the message, though. Someday I'm going to castle here. I think the time has come. You've got to be careful about the connection to h7. And I typically don't play this type of setup with black and the king's indian. starting to rain again for the 17th time in the last week. Wow. I 
I literally have no clue what to do. It's like slow motion. I could even play D5. No, scratch that. No pawns exchanged after 20 moves. It's the weirdest weather in Budapest. It's just been raining nonstop for like two weeks now. June, you wouldn't think of would be like typically the month of rain. It would be like most places April or May, maybe. It's not like springtime, late June. But the other day I looked online and, and I was surprised to see that June does have a history of history of rain. I haven't been in Hungary in June in the last couple of years. So usually I'm elsewhere. Finally a tactical mistake of sorts. So can I take that? Can I borrow that? I was terrified. I mean, he had knight f4 there, threatening knight e6, queen e6, bishop c4, but I could always play d5 at the end. So, I was a little concerned he could leave the, the bishop on a1 and just go knight back to e6 and, and material, like two pieces for a rook or something. Didn't actually work. So tactically, he's, he's beatable. Positionally very strong. All right, I gotta close my window. Be right back. It's like, what is it, like some sort of cloud that never goes away over all of Europe? We've got so many challenges. Great positional game by Sidon. I think you were better. Maybe you should just start playing like D4, main line. This has actually all been played. There's a couple games here from 2016, 2017, and Black's suggested to just play B6 right away. See, my concern would be about the white squares in this type of line. Like you play for bishop f3 or whatever. If c5, c3, again, it's like the Karo Khan with white. Bishop b7. Okay, what would happen if bishop f3? So this is where things get interesting. If I let you trade off your bishop pair in this sort of hypothetical variation, maybe I should avoid exchanging pieces. Then it becomes this like weird, weird Catalan. I mean, white's a little bit passive. I don't think that it's, it's bad though. It's kind of like you're black instead of white. And that's what I'm saying about the London system. It's like playing the Karo Khan. I'm sure at some point white was better in that game. Now we have like a ridiculous amount of challenges. I'm gonna take the guys who are subscribers. We've gotta play Autophagist. You know, he's he's chose to be third. Um, there was another challenge or not? I guess not. So Wikipoo, who's not a subscriber, but I already had canceled him and I wanna play him. We started the game, he didn't show up. Also, I want to convince him to play in our Tuesday arena tomorrow, guys. If you want to be a member of the Pond and Horses Club, you can play in our streamer battle tomorrow at uh, 2 CEST, Central European Summertime. I do have to move first. So tomorrow, um, yeah, 2 p.m., we're going to do a bonus stream. Bonus stream, six-way team battle.
We'll see how that goes. I've never done it before. Three zero, not my time control, but we could we could Pudia might win the tournament. I mean, he's that tough and quick. He's he's a good player to have on the team there. Maybe he won't finish ahead of the Grandmasters, but he can hold his own. If winning is the goal, maybe ask your Hungarian All Star friends to join the battle. Well, I mean, I want you know, yeah, I mean, I could do that. I could ask like Nodge Gabor to play or something. It's not a goal. I just want to basically, um, no problem at all. I basically just don't want to get it. I don't want West to finish last <laughs> or some sort of embarrassing result. It's not important to me to win. I, I, I don't really operate like that. I mean, it's a friendly thing. I just don't really want to finish last. You know, that would be, that would be my, my only concern. I'd like to win. It's not, I'm not that kind of person that it's. It's a friendly thing. No, it's true. You know, I thought about it, but. All right, let's 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 see. This is a bit strange. This bishop on b4 is strange too. Is he losing a piece here? He didn't pay attention. It's a sacrifice. Now I close the window and it stopped raving. I love it. No, I just want enough support that we, we show presence and don't, don't embarrass ourselves. Well, I never played blindfold till I was a master, if that gives you any indication, but I never played a lot of blindfold. There was a very brief period where I did have a match with someone and, and play. Like once I might've done like a six player simul or something, but it was very brief. So he's no, no stranger to making mistakes and he's willing to just sort of go with the flow when he does make one, which is a good skill to have. Wikipoo doesn't try to play perfectly. He's fast and practical. I don't know. Do you remember things from 20 years ago really well? How's your, how's your memory of things you did 20 years ago? Cause mine is getting kind of hazy. Is that you, Bob? I was thinking it was you. That was my first thought. This is this is a mess already. Strange that Bob would show up like that. What a coincidence. I don't get it. So we're gonna lose, now he's gonna have three pawns for a piece, totally unclear. I mean, I don't understand how, how does this happen? One minute I'm like peacefully, you know, just winning a, winning material. The next minute, Peacefully winning material. Where does this even come from? Now I can take here. Is there such a thing as peacefully winning material?
The object of this chess is to move as fast as you can. It seems like my clock is running faster than it used to. <sighs> Unbelievable. How does he have these random tactics just by coincidence? Queen d4, pawn takes pawn. Just happens to have that. What sheer luck. Only first 10 counts tomorrow's battle. I didn't read the rules. Actually, probably should do that. Look if I can hold a draw here. Now this move I didn't see. Nah, this is hopeless. Just too strong for me. I can't play with a player at that level. He's too good. He could just sacrifice pieces and have a winning position. All right, anyway, next game. Autophagus is up. I don't know, but it looks a little too strong to me. Hopefully he plays in the arena tomorrow. It reminds me of losing to Pop Jula the other day with 13 seconds on the clock he used. He must be a GM, Bob. Strange now, I closed the window and there's no air and the rain stopped. I had a lost position, that's why I resigned. Minus 1.5 and 30 seconds versus four minutes, what would you do? I have a negative 1.5 disadvantage with 30 seconds left against my opponent's four minutes. I think resigning is, is a good idea. Couldn't find a move that didn't lose by force. Too strong for me, man. Well, that's respectable, Bob. All right. You have a lost position and one eighth the amount of time that your opponent has. I think resigning is a good choice. We already played auto fascist? No. D4. 
This is typically a strong maneuver. Yeah, I don't have no problem at all. Is only a first 10 that counts? I'm just not that awake to play that fast as Wiki Poo. I guess he intentionally sacrificed a piece after Bishop C1. That was pretty good envisioning. What, a, what an amazing idea that he could sacrifice his piece after Bishop C1. I never would have thought of that. I thought I was trapping a bishop, but apparently he has it all figured out. But I'm not going to keep playing where there's no hope. I really don't like losing. And I don't want to I don't want to prolong my agony if I don't have to. No pawn moves. We have to play bishop e7. It's like a Bafanik sort of browser. Okay guys, lots of challenges. I'm gonna play anyone who's a subscriber first. Doesn't look like there's any subscribers in the house. Hopefully we'll get some support this week. Yesterday we had technical issues. Sorry for that. Queen g7. Technical issues yesterday with my machine. Galiev, I'm not going to play 10 plus 5. That's too long. If you can challenge me to 5, 3, 3, 7 plus 3. How's my queen doing? I just asked that people have 100 hundred or so games. Not really sure what I want to do with this. I'd like to trade queens. <laughs> what is an acerbate? Did anyone ever ask that question? Serbic. You're the expert. We've got Hanish Berger, BB Will, Troll on a Roll, Imre, Oxion. And so all these players, I should be able to take these challenges. This player, I don't know, but I assume he's got 100 games. 36, shouldn't assume anything. All right, so they're not gonna make it. Seven games, not enough games. Pikachu has enough games. Let me trade queens, please. Avoiding the exchange of queens with queen f3, interesting. Everyone's a grandmaster. Now he has h3. If knight c5, bishop c8. That's a little concerning. Maybe knight c5, bishop e8 is better than bishop c8. Sort of an atypical. Atypical maneuver. Now I can trade queens, saving myself from defeat.
Rook b5 just, just walks into threats. What I need to do is, is to undouble my double pawns here. This is a serious problem. F5 is actually interesting. I just don't see how I'm going to get it in. I don't think it's going to happen. I'm going to have to play d5 at some point. Difficult to um, to free myself. We don't know much about this player other than a handful of games I've played. I mean, I guess e5 should be considered, then knight h4, though. Rook g4. Knight g3 is a problem. I just realized. That's going to be a serious issue. We might even have to play rook h8. Wait, I have rook, rook g4, knight g3, h4. Ooh, and we narrowly have rook f4 there. Very strange position. Knight g3, h4, h3, rook f4. He actually has e5. <laughs> if e5, I'm going to have to play d5. Wow. Interesting play with two knights versus two bishops. Challenges, those four are good. I'm streaming till 1.30. We have another hour and a half to play. If you guys want to join the Pond and Horses Club, you can play in our streamer battle tomorrow against Tranquilizer and Mercitsa. Advanced positional play by white. E5 and F5 if I could get it in, but I can't. Maybe E5 and like rook F4. I'm gonna lose on time. What is with the ambulances? We almost lost on time. D5. Yeah, you could play D5. But it's hard to undouble my pawns there. Actually, I'm threatening nothing, though. Church bells already started. It's not even 12 yet. Now it's 12. They're a little early today. The pawn center finally coming to life. I could have definitely sacked the exchange there. like noise pollution central it's hard to be a chess player I 
It's really freaking hard to concentrate in this city. So much noise outside. Damn it, he read my mind. I was ready to play. I was reaching for my A pawn and he played B4. That pawn has got to be lonely. We're going to single it out. Separate it from the flock. Cut down in the prime of its life. Tidal wave of pawn action here. That went, went south for white, though. I think in the opening he was doing fine. It's a very unusual line when he played this bishop b5. Voluntarily exchanging on f6, is that what you did? Oh, I played bishop b7 and you took. Right, okay, Sergei Kudrin played knight f5 against me. This is actually not a bad line to go there. You have to play knight f5 here. Okay, this is a rare move. Morozevich just played that, I think. Not not as good though. Here. Yeah, and it's not so it's not so easy for black to equalize in this. I've got a team request. Galiev. Alright, you're accepted. Sorry I didn't accept your long challenge. But ten plus was a little too much. Alright. Hanish Burger, BB Well, we'll just take these in order. Pawn chain became strong. The goal is for him not to allow me to play f5 last game. He let me undouble my pawns in my pawn center. Obviously able to roll at that point. Trolls, pawns on the roll. Ram Dom. Fisher random. A random fisher. So join our pond and horses club tomorrow, 2 p.m. bonus stream. And then also tomorrow we'll have our blitz tournament as we do every 6.30 p.m. on Tuesdays. I pre-moved. It's a safe pre-move with the bishop g2 there. I've got to play faster for the 3-2 arena I play on Thursday nights. I'm just... I'm not as fast as Wikipoo, but I'm... I like to at least, you know, think a little bit about my moves. When I drop a piece, I, I just lose a piece. You know, Wikipoo, like, drops a piece and it's no problem. He just automatically has enough compensation. 
I'm not that lucky, you know. I have to think about my moves. You get five pawns on the fourth rank. Is that what I had? I just try to take my time, make sure I don't make an obvious mistake. I can't play without thinking. So the 3-2 the is really hard. Yesterday, not yesterday, the other day there was that match between Ivanchuk and Kamsky. And not to diss Kamsky, but I was looking at the games. And I still, I like Ivanchuk. Ivanchuk is just... You know, he's trying to play deeper. Kamsky was playing like sort of cheap, simple chess. And Ivanchuk was there trying to play a little bit deeper. And he still won the match. And when I play 3-2, it feels like the games are just garbage. Even when my opponents beat me, it's usually garbage. But with Ivanchuk, he's like playing he's playing real chess in 3 plus 2. Which is really hard to do. I mean, not to diss Kamsky, but he, I think Ivanchuk's just a stronger player. I always liked his style. Extremely deep and brilliant, you know. Massive amount of knowledge and talent. Just look at the games. Even in 3 plus 2, there's something there. So, Hanish Burger Strange, I faced something similar the other day. I'm seeing a lot of this lately. So, what did I play here? I castled, you played CD, but I faced yesterday castles. Was it CD, knight d4, bishop c5? Had to be something slightly different in my simul. Simultan. Well, I guess bishop g5 here. Does that even threaten anything? It doesn't really threaten anything. It's pretty sick. It's a reversed Grunfeld. No, but I mean, Carlson is more practical. I think Kamsky tries to play a little more like Carlson. Trying to just play fast and practical. Neither of them's fast though. I mean Kamsky or Ivanchuk. They're both they're both old and slow. Ivanchuk's up there with what? In an interview he said he believes he could compete with Carlson. Well, you, you know, you have to get the feeling from Ivanchuk's play that he is kind of childishly optimistic. He's definitely not a typical 50-year-old dude, you know. He's basically a child in an adult body. big child running to play like checkers when the prize giving for the chess tournament is being held he never grew up you know so it wouldn't surprise me if he's very optimistic yeah I was surprised how young Ferruja is on another subject I, I mean I, I guess I realized it at some point but he doesn't look that young you know, when you see pictures of him. And I was thinking, damn, he's only 17. That is still extremely young. For the level he's attained. Okay. So this is all like a variation. More typically played with colors reversed against the Grunfeld.
awkward silence. Knight c5. There's no follow up to that move. Knight c5. I just can't really support it properly. It's like Queen E7 is just gonna gain a tempo on me. No. Bishop E3, Knight G4 is always a problem. I mean, I guess it can go Bishop C5. What I don't wanna do is just like trade pieces here. Bishop G5, H6. All right, do your H6. So Asapenko, I don't know. I'm afraid that Asapenko might have that not have that he might not have this sort of magical spark of creativity. Perhaps he'll be a little too robotic. I think that Russian players and Hungarian players as well, you know. Because the system is so strongly in place for training, um, you know, they're not like self-taught as much as Westerners. There's this tendency to be kind of become like robotic sort of. With a player like Faruja coming from Iran, I mean, you got a little bit more of an open. Open mind there. Rockport isn't robotic. He's the only one, but you know Rockport had like a million trainers. He's not. He's he's not the typical Hungarian grandmaster. He comes from a wealthy family. He was trained by like a million different grandmasters that his dad paid for, or whoever paid for. He is he is definitely not um, absolutely not a typical grandmaster for for Hungary. And that's probably why, you know, he's as great as he is and has so much creativity. He's not a product of the system, you know, as much as the others. The Hungarian school of chess is really good at creating like 2,600 players, but almost nobody goes above that. Because I think there's necessarily a sort of limitation. Maybe there's not enough creativity. Rapport went a little too far, like he... He's got this wild streak that, um, like Morozevich, that maybe takes him a little too far over the edge. If you toned Rapport down a little bit, but I like Ferruja. Dubov would be my preference. Yeah. But Asapenko is, is a lot younger. Sorry for my, my Russian pronunciations. Not the best. Hanging out with Bob too much. We're gonna have to time you out, man. Let's try to behave ourselves. We're gonna have to like, we're definitely gonna have to time out trolling a roll for bad behavior. Creative. Creative trolling. Creative trolling aside, what is happening with 94 at any moment here, by the way? <sighs> he was vulgar. I only tolerate light, light profanity, and troll and roll is going beyond that, so sorry. I'm gonna have to be timed out. I apologize for this, but it's for your own good. 
Whew, Hemisberger, really solid. Jeez. I've got nothing here. I'm even having like deja vu from some other game I played. It's weird. That rarely happens. Literal deja vu during a blitz game of another position that I played. Yeah, that move he's been waiting for. The F2 pawn in the Grunfeld. Played like an idiot in this game. Talking too much. Poof. Careful now. He's like sneaking up on me. I probably just missed the winning move like queen b5 there. I still don't have any threats. Knight c4. Stay away. Stay away from the Chalupa. He's doing a great job. Finally. Man, that was tough for 1500 Hanischberger. Really, really competitive game. BB, the troll, Pikachu Master. All right. Troll is timed out, but I'll still permit a game. He's been timed out from chat for profanity. All right. This is a new opponent. I had all sorts of tactics, but every time I looked at the clock, there was like six seconds. So I was just like, all right, forget it. I am not going to play any tactical sequence that doesn't sort of jump out at me immediately. Tomorrow, 2 p.m., streamer battle. Should join our club, Pun and Horses Club, to be a part. Six-way streamer battle. And my tournament tomorrow, we've got our weekly arena, not arena, but uh, Swiss in this case. Swiss Blitz. I should not pre-move here. Ponda and Horses Club. Can somebody put it up there? Dragondorf. It is the Dragondorf. Is not the name, that's not the name of my club. That's the name of this opening. Bob, you're kind of digging a little deep now. Everybody is like a troll name. What? Steve Smith sounds like a troll name. You're desperate for a, for a concept. This is interesting though. I mean, the B5 could be a problem. Everything, your mind is in the gutter. Unbelievable. I couldn't even have thought of that if you hadn't pointed it out. Let's try to keep the porn references to a minimum. This is a an all ages channel. So, bishop takes d4. It's almost transposed into a, 
a theoretical line. I just don't know about the move rookie eight. I guess rookie eight was to stop bishop h6, which I think is an overrated concept. I know that a5 might be a move. My biggest concern here. Typical for this type of variation. Now it's definitely a concept. Maybe we should just beat him to the punch with a quick knight e5 and play this boring, boring, minutely better position for white. Pretty safe, actually. He didn't get the counterplay with a5 you normally see in this type of line. He was a little too hesitant. And now we've got our standard kingside stuff, g4 or h4. He could defend though with h6. I'm not sure how, how guaranteed this kingside attack is. e5. e5, e6. h4. Maybe we go with h4. If he plays h6, I'm not sure how to continue. His kingside is getting a little bit weakened. I'm looking for things like e5, e5, e6. Just did it voluntarily, but now I have two threats, h5 and the d6 pawn. That should be problems. Maybe black is lost now. Unless he intends to play g5, maybe he can hang on. Rook b6, h5, g5. This shouldn't really be enough. Is h5 a winning attack? I'm really not convinced. We'll take this first. We're winning material. I wasn't convinced about h5. But black misplayed the opening. The dragon, Dragondorf, I don't know if it's considered really good. Carlsen has played some a6 style dragons. I'm not sure where it stands theoretically though. I don't think you could just... The dragon itself sucks, so I'm not sure you can get away with playing like sub variations of the dragon like a6 but maybe in certain positions you just don't see a lot of top players playing the dragon and there's a reason for that it's sort of like you don't even need to know exactly why there's a reason why like only gawain jones plays the dragon Well, I'm not sure there's a concrete refutation, say, in Yugoslav. Now he's threatening a4. So. h5, a4. How strong is our attack? Take, take, queen h2. I was going to just play a3. Should be good enough. I mean, the dragon's been out under a cloud forever. But there's always someone willing to argue, argue otherwise. That was a fast 10 minutes. someone unban troll in a roll is that 10 minutes up already it was the fastest time out of all time I guess it was a long game but obviously trading here isn't gonna save black this is a very good end game We've got more space and we're a clear pawn up
So a4 followed by b4 is, is quite dangerous, actually. Very dangerous threat. So you have to be careful. Rook d4, e5 might even be a problem, come to think of it. And if c3, yeah, maybe c3 is my best. We'll have to take and play c4, which is kind of awkward. But at least my king is safe, and it's hard for him to attack my c pawn. Not really sure which way to go with the bishop there. Yeah, I think he's lost. This looks pretty bad. No counterplay. Pawn down. I get my king to the center. Now I'm glad I kept my bishop where I did. <laughs> it was a good choice, apparently. If you're gonna play e5, then the bishop a2 is definitely the right choice. Pre-move rook d7. I almost did it. I think it says don't even think about it in Chinese. Breaking free. What if Troll on a Roll is secretly Bob? We never knew it till now. Deviously pretending to be. I hate this move actually. Why am I playing King B4? Is that extra pawn really going to make a difference here? Well, it should be enough to get the job done, though. Actually. You can have my e-pawn, but I still get back in time and I have two connectors. Or just b4, king d4, b5. b4, king d4, b5, king e4, b6. King anywhere. I mean, I'm queening way too fast. Yeah, I'm willing to, I mean, I'm willing to change the overlay. I'm not, you know, depends on how much you pay me. <laughs> I'm taking bids. I'll let you buy a new overlay. Oh, Mr. Coffee's in the house. I know, it's like this obsession. It's all because of personal reasons. All right, we've got an hour left. Subscribers in the house. Zakaria's challenge will be rated. I'm not doing that. No, there's no time for more challenges, Sinan. You know? We've got like too many challenges. Miralis is here. That's nice of you, Bob. Sincere. It would help my channel succeed if someone would send a message to Lee Chest to fix the frickin' simul page. Mr. Coffee, you did that already. Mr. Coffee's so shy, though. We need someone to spam them. G6 seems like a problem. The latest is H4. 
Mr. Coffey, were you firm in your message to leech us? PN2206, I hope so. I have a prep here, no. I just can't play G6 anymore because Testosterone refuted it with H4, and I ended up sitting there for like three minutes. I have no prep here. There's nothing better than this. Maybe G5. How about g5? Is that a good move? Yeah, PN 2206. I allow people to post links, but you know, click on them at your own discretion. If you want to post a link about the forum from Leech Us, that's fine. Bishop g4, bishop f7, check. Classic trap. So if I play knight c6, he plays d4. cd4, knight d4. I'm down the tempo in the Sicilian. Bishop d7 seems okay, doesn't it? Well, when I set up a simul, it appears on the simul page for like a couple minutes and then disappears again. So we have no players because no one knows about the simuls. That's been going on for two weeks. It's kind of a major problem. Mate in one. This must be part of white sophisticated I can't speak systemic strategy. I wanted to say systematic, then I changed my mind. What do we got here? Why did you take so long in that move? I mean, knight d5, e6. You wouldn't seriously trade queens, would you? I feel like I'm playing the birds variation of the Royal of Paz. That pawn is really gonna fall. How about b5? Does that just weaken my position? It's been a long time since I had to ban someone for just being a jerk. It's nice, though, that I don't have to do that too often. That wasn't you, right, Bob? 
I thought it could be at first. Some other attention seeker. But yeah, but I mean that's that's like a special circumstance. Repeat trolls. Strange position, yes. Looks like I have to play I could play knight takes e4. Funny. This is going to be very dangerous. But it seems consequent. Often. I don't pronounce the T, but some people do. Tomato, tomato. Maybe if you're like a Bostonian from Cheers or something. A lot of the old, old school rich people from Boston sort of pronounce everything very correctly. Like they're still speaking British English in 2020. Often, it's often. This is not really looking safe for, for, for black. Um, I don't know too many people that go out of their way to pronounce often, often. Less common these days. The nobleman in our, in our company, perhaps. Exactly. It sounds pretentious and it's meant to. Something you might say at the, at the Harvard club. What is going on here? Wow, Morales just dropped a piece. He's got bishop g5 mate. That wouldn't be the first time I hung a piece against him recently. Can't believe it. You're trying to, like, sneak me with bishop g5 mate. Unbelievable. And I almost fell for it. The second time this year. I would have been mated by Morales. The game would like close and I wouldn't even know what happened. Goodness. That's disturbing. I guess I could have played Queen A5 check, then C3. B7 is another issue. Don't try this at home. Not a very reliable continuation for black. When I talk to the garbage man, it's not pretty. My last discussion with the garbage man ended in a near fatal confrontation. <laughs> when he was backing up the garbage truck on my street in Boston the wrong way toward my car. It's not really recommended to get into confrontations with garbage guys. I wish I had been armed, then I might be in jail though. No, I don't go around armed. Sorry, Bob. But I did lose my, I lost my temper. Almost got beat up by the garbage guy. I really need to trade queens before something really bad happens here. Actually, really good job in the United States. They get paid extremely well. I think they would be more noble getting paid like that.
I guess it depends on the town. The ones that work for municipalities may get paid more, I don't know, than the ones that work for big trash companies. This guy was not happy about being asked to drive the right way on a one-way street. That was apparently not acceptable. Too much to ask. Getting out of the the danger zone here. I'm lucky to have survived. He didn't hit my car, but he was threatening to. It was more like a heated argument and shouting match. He was a big dude. But I was just outraged that I'm, I'm, I'm being forced to back down my own street the wrong way because he's going the wrong way. Illegally. How am I going to support that pawn? No, I lived in a state troll where most people don't have guns. What's happening here? Relentless. The positional play that's scary from Morales. Nothing tactical, just this enduring positional play. Even with the queens off, I'm still under pressure. Lost a pawn. Mr. Slowhand, like exchange sacrifice from yesterday. Relentless. Unbelievably relentless assault. Getting confused.
That was ugly. We were just lost. Man, look at this opening. He's the world's leading expert in this opening. Sick. You can't get out of the opening. You can't get out of the opening alive against him. What am I doing? I don't want to create a study. I just want to analyze this position. All right. Damn. I just played this to get out of book. Just to play something different, you know? Immediately finds the most incisive attempt here. Take, take queen f3. This move is, the problem is they have four break later on, positionally. Check him out with queen b3. So I looked at d5. I didn't think it was a big deal. Strange. I still don't know if I understand how this works. So what happens if he just takes the pawn? This is better for, for black. What? Man, that's, wow, that's, that's beyond me. This is apparently better for black or equal. I didn't think I could do that. So I went for this. This is insane. This is totally insane. I almost dropped mate in one with knight c5 here. Man, this is a terrible position. All right, guys, I have time for 45 minutes worth of games. Let me, um, thanks for joining the club. I can't believe I could just play d5 there. I almost hung mate in one. All right, troll in a roll. Post timeout. You better behave yourself or I'm not gonna accept your challenges. Knight's in the corner. He was misbehaving. You weren't here, Mr. Coffee, but he's been influenced. Social media influencers got to troll. I think they are from K-pop. Um, F5 is a good move. You're immediately on my knight with F4 maybe. I'm not sure I like that. This is the sharpest move, opening the king position. It's like playing e4 at normal chess. Guys, tomorrow, please be here at 2 p.m. CEST, European Central Time Summer version. All right. Solid move, but not very exciting. Maybe F4, but it is kind of extending, maybe overextending for black here. E5 is a solid move. I just made the move from it. It let me do that. Wow. Crazy. Once in a while in Chess 960, I just can't understand where the pieces are. I think I might have made a mistake here. The real question is, like, if he plays f4, can I safely put my knight in f5 without fear of it getting trapped? No, I have serious doubts about that. The way he played it is probably non-critical. Yeah, 
But I suppose g6 is okay. That's a lot of dark score weaknesses. In fact, like bishop g5 might have been strong. Am I going to play Pikachu Master? I think so. That's the next game. And I think we might have time to finish these three challenges. Don't anybody else challenge me. Um, we have time for at least two more. I'm not going to guarantee the Osmir game. Depending on how fast I can run through these others. What are you doing? Queen d7 check. We can always trade queens. I feel more comfortable trading queens. You want to steal my A pawn. Even this is not a bad move. A bit strange, moving it several times though. I'll put my king on c2, no problem with that. Artificial castling, if you insist. Something like queen e6. Anyways, it's a really good square for my, for my king. Snug as a bug in a rug. An old Russian saying. At least according to Mr. Chekhov. Bishop d6. Sorry, I've been watching too much Star Trek lately. Just for Mr. Coffee. We're getting developed. It's all good. Pinning oneself. The pinning of oneself. So you want to take the pawn, EF5, take on E5. Is there any reason why not? Yes, I ought to be a little materialistic sometimes. When in doubt, be materialistic. I really try not try to teach people not to be materialistic. Way too many people are materialistic. Yeah, I mean, I'm threatening knight h5. He's got some serious problems here. Yeah, not troll's best opening. We got some more challengers. <laughs> Pandino. Pandino. A fan of Panda, obviously. But I don't take challenges 4 plus 0 rated. These are the last two, three, sorry, last three for today. Quickly. Pandinho. Panda's not that fast moving. Ronaldinho of chess. I'm more like a giant tree sloth. All right, Panda. We've got a 3-0 arena and a 3 plus 2 arena today. I mean, this week, tomorrow, and then Thursday, so you're going to have to speed it up. Rook D1 was a strong move. Pikachu Master, we've never played before. I guess I would try to be incisive. I don't normally play this. I don't play like C4 often. I kind of gave up on it a long time ago, but objectively, I guess it's playable. There is some issues here with this pawn on D4. Grammar, very important here on the stream. So E3. Pawn takes pawn, bishop g7. Wow, we, we ended up like, we ended up sacking another pawn there. This is cool. Wow, is this theory? I've never seen this before.
I'd have to sack a pawn there. I mean, Bob, sack a pawn to... Let's go for it. I'm willing to play some crazy stuff. Pikachu Master knows this, apparently. He's got a lot of games. Not a new account. He's 1,200 in, in Chestnut 960. He better have some weak weaknesses. So we have a lot of development here for the pawn. Seems reasonable. Reasonable compensation. He's used five seconds for the game so far. And what's your rating? 1700. All right. I'm a little concerned about this game. Maybe we should just... Ninety five. Is this even good? Maybe it's good enough to to maintain the balance, but man, 1700, 1600 in bullet, oof. This was a strange decision. He had played a great game until that move. In fact, I think he's winning. If he just does anything else. Maybe not winning, but objectively better. I guess he didn't want to lose his e7. Maybe it's not so easy, but... He has at least equal chances, I think. Even so, he might. I'm kind of inclined to think about taking a draw here with bishop d7. Looks like a trade queens, maybe. It's risky. Rook d7. I'm down a pawn. Now maybe I can take on e7. But I'm scared, honestly. Maybe even have c6 there. Yeah, I think I'll just take a draw here. I'm paranoid that I'm worse. He's used 30 seconds for the whole game. A 
little too strong for 1700. No, actually, I can win his queen? No. This is crazy. Queen a7. He should play for a win. You're 1600 in bullet. At least I got a draw. Because either way, his queen filters in, he's got a lot of play. Let's check this game with the engine. Am I misevaluating the final position? Apparently I'm clearly better. I mean, that's easy to say if you're a computer taking on a7. Like, okay, it's not even sure. Now it's down to like 0.7. I mean, I'm not playing that in a practical game with less, less time than my opponent. This is, this is unbelievable. So let's just see. Yeah, it's the main move in the opening explorer. But what else can black do? He could play c5. Yeah, that's actually a good idea c5 takes and knight c6. I mean, this is kind of a standard concept. I don't think I was crushing Bob. By what? By what measure? Because of a 0.7 advantage with my king exposed against a player with three minutes to one? That's not convincing at all. No, I think you need to get your phone fixed. Wade is not playing like a, did not play like a 17, 1600 bullet player here. I think the draw is, is actually reasonable. This queen a7 is not, is not really that clear at all. It's actually 0.4 according to my engine. Very, very messy and dangerous. Highly suspicious. All right. I mean, is there a moment where I really was? Yeah, I mean, he did make a bad move, B takes C, which I don't understand. This was a, this was a bad move, clearly. But what's my refutation? Did I miss something better? Rook D7. Okay, I was scared of Bishop E8, I guess. I didn't see this move. Knight d5. Apparently that is strong. Yeah, I don't know why he played d takes c. The rest of his moves were perfect. But I didn't see this. I saw rook d7 rejected it because of bishop e8. And I thought this was unclear, for example. If I had more time, I would play an exchange sack like this. But where my time's running out, my opponents use 20 seconds for the whole game. Um, I want something a little more airtight. So I just, if I had seen 95, I probably would have played it. All right, so time for two last games. I'm like Ivanchuk. I just offer draws to everyone in winning positions. <laughs> no, I mean, he's used 20 seconds for the whole game, and it's not that easy for me. The final position, actually. Once I play bishop d7, I really don't have anything. Rook d7 was crushing, but I have to see that knight d5 move, and I didn't see it. So I was pressured for time. 
Accelerated Dragon. How's our ping today? Yesterday we had crazy ping. It's kicking up to 70. That's not bad. I was on 500, 1,000 yesterday. This is a strange move. Undeveloping with Knight F3 here. Very rare. Might not be that bad, I guess. But very counterintuitive. That bad is relative. Yeah, no, I mean, you're supposed to support your knight. I see a lot of people make another mistake when they take c6. You have to support your knight with bishop b3. Just try to make every move that you, you know you can developmental. Osmir, thanks for the donation, 100 bits. Less talk, more action from Osmir's. Much appreciated. So if I play knight f6, is there any sort of tactical trick? Like e5? Doesn't work. e5, knight e5. His bishop might get trapped in that line. Knight e5, knight e5, pawn e5, queen d8, king d8, bishop f7, and then e6. Threatening king e7. It's still not that bad for white. You made a minor mistake, so now you're you're equal rather than slightly better. When you're white, you you can afford to make one inaccuracy of sorts, and still have no major issues. Osmir is up next. I can't take rated challenges, Pandino. And there's no time for more games. Do I know the big Greek? No, but there's a very strange thing about the big Greek, you know, that it's just the weirdest thing, right? I don't know him. I never met him. I've seen his videos and I know who he is. But you know what's weird? There's this guy, right? The big Greek. He's a I am from Greece named Georgios Sulaitis or something like that, right? That's the guy. And for me, the weird part is that I know this German I am who's around the same age and his name is George Su. He's actually German, right? I mean, what is the chance that there's a guy around the same age named George Georgios Sulaitis and a guy from Germany named George Su? Who are the exact same age and both I am so like for a long time I thought it was some sort of conspiracy theory like they were the same person but apparently it's a totally different guy I just thought that's kind of funny you know I mean isn't that weird I know George Sewell because I played him so for a long time when I first saw the Greek guy's name I thought like George Sewell had moved to, to Greece and changed his name to sound Greek or something it's kind of weird. Maybe the Greek guy is older, uh, slightly, but I'm not sure. It's just really strange. It's like you took the guy's name and made it Greek. So I only know the German one. But then when I saw he was like doing courses in German, I mean, that's part of the mystery, why it was so weird for me. I'm like, oh, it has to be. George Sewell, because, you know, he's he's doing classes in German, and he lives in Germany. And it's like a completely different guy. All right. Anyway, no, I don't know him, the Greek one. But I know he's prolific in doing a lot of videos and training and stuff. So, looks like a Smith Moore where I'm not up a pawn. Actually, White's playing this pretty well. 1442, solid. Solid 1442. I'm not sure I have any advantage.
I mean, the, the German guy has a kind of weird name to begin with. Zul. It's it's not very common. I don't know what the origins of that are. But I was convinced there was a conspiracy theory. They were the same person. But then when I saw the big Greek's picture, you know, years ago, I realized it's a different person. Still kind of a strange coincidence. I'm not English. I'm American, but I live in Hungary. Long story, don't ask. I originally came to Hungary to get away from Al-Qaeda, but I eventually stayed to avoid Donald Trump. I'm in Hungary so I can pass on the savings to the consumer and offer cheaper lessons. I have all different reasons for being here. No, I'm not English. PN is pretty strong for a 1400. I don't know if I'll be able to draw. Hopefully I'll hold a draw here. If I was up upon, you know, it would be a different story. Usually I have this type of position like the H4, an excellent move. <laughs> Good thing this isn't, this is why I don't play rated games, by the way. I don't want to like draw with 1400s who are playing a thousand points better than their, their provisional rating or whatever. But I think it's a draw after g3. h4 wasn't a bad move, actually. Now it's going to be a tough game for white. But still, it may not be necessarily lost. This move devalues his pawn structure. I think f4 might be a further mistake. Now he's down a pawn and has an inferior pawn structure. So some subtle mistakes are gonna cost him here. Now this ending, the king upon game is lost, of course. It should be lost. Now I'm not so sure. Better be lost. You have a lot of space there. I'm getting a little nervous. How fast can I stop those pawns? King F7. B5, king e, B5, king g6, f4, king f6, f3, king e6, f2. His pawns are too slow. G5 instead of f5. It would have probably screwed my whole position. How do you have time to take this? Yeah, I mean, it was careless. Careless in game play. I mean, until G3, when you should have played G3. Actually, H4 is not a bad move, as I said. I think it's a draw. The engine thinks that black is equal, yeah. 
It's totally equal. I have double pawns, which isn't really optimal. Okay, guys, last game against... Yeah, the endgame takes practice. You have to study endgames. G5 was fine. G5. How does that work? Thanks, Bob. We'll have your endgame class later. I'm going to default to myself on endgame classes. Endgame classes with Bob. Not really recommended. Structurally, f5 is a much better move. And there are reasons for that. You know, if g5 is a good move there, it's, it's by pure luck. Some sort of computer calculation style stuff. You're leaving yourself, leaving white to play e5 and bust the structure. It's probably still winning, but you'd have to count a lot of tempos. In order to win with that move g5, you'd have to sit there and literally calculate like 20 moves deep, Bob, like a computer. You don't realize that because you're just like spouting off the recommendation of the engine or whatever. But there's no like kind of basic rule that you could use to make that move. It would require literally exceedingly deep calculation to count if g5 works or not in that position. As humans, we have to rely on kind of more general strategic ideas. We would be hopeless. I mean, that's, I believe you that G5 might win, but you don't want to be like counting tempos for 30 moves deep, you know, to see, well, maybe, you know, he runs out of moves at the end of the line. I just see my structure getting broken with g5, e5 for white. With f5, if he ever takes the g pawn, you know, I have a protected pass pawn. The value of the protected pass pawn there was so high that um, his only chance would have been to play like c4, d4, d5, possibly create two connected pass pawns. That was, that was the one concern why I played b5 quickly. I don't know why um, I'm facing this twice today. Bishop b5, um, the Rouser attack, Richter attack, excuse me. Kind of a rare move. Do I study the simul games? Uh, I wouldn't call it studying them. This Sunday yesterday was kind of messed up because of the my computer getting laggy and um, the stream shutting down. So I, I didn't study as comprehensively as I might in some cases. I looked over a few of the games, but I couldn't recall them. If you ask me, I don't remember exactly. One or two I might remember, a few, a handful, you know, but usually with the people who I know better, I more focus on those and they, they stay in my memory better. When I'm playing new people for the first times, I mean, I don't really remember their their screen name that well. It doesn't stick. So G5 here. I play different stuff. I have a pretty wide repertoire with, with black against E4, but mostly Sicilian. The other stuff is all sort of just occasional. I don't know. I think I've had other games with G5 where it's just insane. How about knight E4? Yeah, that's a good move. <laughs> yeah, how about losing your queen for nothing? Impossible. Impossible Nadavian Wolf. That's a long name. Oh, you're the one I, I played the St. George against. Oh God, that was one of my other catastrophic games. Lots of mistakes for both sides. Yeah, the time pressure did me in. I was winning that game. I was winning against Nefidov. I was winning against Nodge Papa. 
I was winning a whole bunch of games that I lost. I always get in time pressure, but yesterday was a little worse than usual because of my my problem with the stream dropping. I got into a really bad lag. I'm just thinking, yeah, G5 isn't gonna work here. Unless you wanna play it as an all out pawn sacrifice. Kind of an interesting idea. Um, commonly used in some in some positions. But it, it does look a little dangerous for black, this position. I did, it was a complicated position. And I didn't see a lot of stuff. Like bishop a8, putting my bishop on a8 made a lot of sense. And I didn't, um, couldn't think very clearly. I didn't really look close enough for the game though. Like when I said I played f5, it was um, really risky move for me. It might have been good, but I haven't really looked at that position. I'm curious if that was a bad move by me. Yeah, yeah, both, both sides made lots of mistakes in that game. One of the more, but that's typical. You know, if you play a crazy opening like the King's Gambit or the St. George defense or something like that, I mean, it's more likely that both sides are gonna make a lot more mistakes than some sort of dry, boring opening. So I expect that. All right, Asmir, very strong opening here. Bishop b5 is a move that I probably should look at a little more, a little more seriously. It's just nobody plays it except for uh, Langel Bela, my former neighbor, lives a couple streets away, who passed away like two years ago. He was a specialist, but I don't think we ever played more than a couple blitz games. And actually, when I did play him, I would play the Accelerated Dragon because I like to play against the Classical, and that's what he played. So I didn't play a lot of Rousers against him either. I didn't want to see his pet system. We're just trying to play solidly here. Greek gift in the King's Gambit. <laughs> Highly unusual. All right, so Asmir's kind of lost control of the center. I like our game, we can play Kind of fun move here, g5. Of course, watching out for tactics against our center. Oof. That's not good. It's still not over, though. Just definitely doesn't look healthy for white. Though his dark sword bishop is unopposed and quite strong here. His king is not, not in a good way. Though I'm not sure it's that easy to exploit. Knight h5, perhaps. Well, the game that we're referring to in the in the St. George yesterday, for example. Um, games where I have to calculate clearly are not, <laughs> not really good for me in the simul, where I don't have a lot of time. Damn, I miscalculated. This is probably good compensation still for white. Still not so easy. This should be five.
this move I missed entirely. Yeah, 94 move 10 is a possibility, but to be frank, like those tactics almost never work. I would say like eight out of 10 of those examples where you have the knight takes e4 tactic and the Sicilian, they either don't work or lead to equality. I mean, they're just not worth playing. I've kind of almost given up on it. Yeah, I mean, I would probably end up losing my d6 pawn. He would be fine. I doubt that that's even good for me. This is my last game, guys. I gotta go. I'm really losing the thread here. Objectively, black is winning, but it's not easy, and um, He's still got some fighting left in him. Taking good defensive skills here to win with black. Yeah, 94 wasn't that great, I don't think. E5, knight E5. No matter where I put my king, I'm not safe. If f4, sorry, f6, g4, <laughs> suddenly, like, totally unclear what's going on here. Osmiris has gotten stronger and stronger. His results are inexplicable. I mean, he's way better than this score against me. Always a fighting game, almost. You would think, like, if you've beaten someone, you know, 47 and a half to one and a half, it would be a really decisive kind of score, but it's not. I am not comfortable at all in this position as well. We have to be super careful here. Um, rook h7, rook h6. It's very precarious. In fact, like, he's got g4. Still, he's got g4. The dark square bishop is so strong, it's, it's just ridiculous. Sorry for repeatedly saying the same word. <laughs> I do that sometimes. Get hung up on something. Wow, dude. Very dangerous. He's extremely strong with his pieces. Maybe that's his problem. Like, not a lot of pawn play. That's part of the problem with this system, though. I mean, if you're just developing the pieces, they're not using the pawns very much when they play, like, bishop e5, bishop g5 type of systems. Not a lot of subtlety with the pawns here. I think I more specialize in, in pawn play. Simple double attack. And tactics against e5. Knight d5, bishop d5, bishop d5, knight f6. Bishop d5, knight f6. It's 
like a wild man. No compromises. There's something about that, yes. Thank God my brook is protected. Good thing. Good thing it's protected. It's a little like that St. George game we were talking about. Actually, Queen G8 doesn't work. It's fortunate. I mean, objectively, I should be winning here. I have a slight threat, but only now. Last game, guys, I have to go. He actually defended against it, but I don't see how he's going to defend against it again. I'm not sure if he defended on purpose or by accident, but I was threatening bishop e5 check. The same thing. That was a crazy game. Wild attacking style. But if you want, we can look at move 10. So this was played by the Latvian Vita Lynch. Is that the same Vita Lynch? I figured he was dead by 2009. Maybe not. No one has played Queen C7 previously. It's a new move. But the suggestion of Knight E4 doesn't work here. Because after knight e4, bishop h4, I mean, you could play it, but it doesn't look really safe. This king is not, not that happy. You're compromising your, your ability to castle long term. <laughs> Today's trolls get one pawn out of five, Bob. That's my troll rating for today. The stream's trolls. Um, I like playing for g5. I would like to play g5 here, but I didn't see, you know, any kind of real, real compensation. So queen c5, like, queen c7, I mean, it's about like setting up, it's setting up cheapos against h2, essentially. Sorry guys, today's trolls on the stream only one one pawn out of five on the troll rankings. But um, this was a good game. Castles, Queen C7, A4, okay. Now here I might have had it. Now did I miss it after all that? This is much more possible, you know. Even so, it looks like white sort of has compensation for a sacrificed pawn. So I'm not that into that. See if we missed anything obvious. This wasn't that easy. How to finish him off here. I did decentralize with knight h5. It was hard to get it back in the game after that. Not really optimal. I guess I defended about as well as I could, could defend. So if knight d5... Bishop d5, bishop d5, knight f6. Do you have this combination now, bishop e6? If we do the same thing, this is actually working, apparently. Down a rook, and he's holding a draw here. Check, queen a6. 
Well, the engine thinks it's equal. Like, I should take a draw by repetition in this position. Interesting. Anyway, guys, I got to go. Thanks for the challenges. Don't forget streamer battle tomorrow at 2 p.m. CEST against Tranquilizer and others. I will um, post my normal Tuesday night stream, 6.30 CEST tomorrow night with uh, Ponda Blitz stream. Blitz Swiss. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Say bye. Say bye, Mom. Bye, Mom. <laughs>